This is Lars Fredrickson from the Old Firm Casuals and Rancid, and you're watching Behind the Ink on Pit Cam TV. Start the pit. Do you remember your very first yes, tattoo? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I got, um, when I was 11 years old, uh, a friend of mine named Sean used a homemade tattoo machine and tattooed oi. You still have it? Oh, yeah. It's right there. Okay, cool, man. Tattooed oi, because I loved oi when I was 11. I still love oi. You still love your tattoo? Yeah, of course. It used to be on my shin. But since I grew up, it moved over to the side of my leg. Do you have any band tattoos? Yes, I have a, a lot. A lot? Yeah, I have a Cox Bar tattoo. I have a Rancid 2, a Rancid 2, a Rancid tattoo. I have Anti Nowhere League, Dropkick Murphys, um, Rose tattoo, uh, Motorhead. Uh, I like the Motorhead one. Yeah, yeah, Motorhead's tight. On Google, you find a lot of pictures from Rancid fan tattoos. Uh, what do you think about these tattoos? It's a little, it's it's cool because I mean I'm a I'm a fan of music, right? So like, I know what it's like to love a band enough to want a tattoo. Like I, I still want to get an agnostic front tattoo, but then like Roger is like one of my best friends, so it's like, is he gonna think I'm a kook? <laughs> you know what I mean? But like you know, uh, you know I got a last resort tattoo. Um, Roy Pierce is your friend too, right? Yeah, he's, he's a very dear friend. I want to get a business tattoo because uh, it's normally any band that I kind of, I, I, you know, that I love or I've worked with, you know. Like I produced an Agnostic Front record, so. Yeah. And plus they're one of my all-time favorite bands. And then the business, I produced a few records for them, wrote songs for, with them. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I, I, when I see people like that, it's, it's flattering. Um, But you, you, it's kind of like one of those things where you kind of like, uh, it's, it's freaky. It's, it's, it's strange, but it's cool. Yeah. So is there a very special Rancid fan tattoo you remember? Yes. This girl had, I met, had Rancid, like the logo tattooed across her back. It was huge. And I remember going, fuck, that must have hurt. Do you think there's a special context between punk music and getting tattooed? I think it's, it's kind of like, for me, when I was getting tattooed, nobody really had tattoos except for like the bikers or, you know, some of the older punks and skinhead guys that I knew or whatever. So um, it was just always kind of a part of the culture, kind of like, in my opinion. I mean, but cultures kind of evolve and change and stuff like that. So I started getting them because, uh, number one, I liked it and um, I wanted to be different from everybody else. Yeah, so do you think it's still kind of a rebellion in 2012? I think it is what it is. It's like anything, you know I mean? It's like at some point, you know, it's, it's kind of like punk rock music got popular. And it's like, well, no shit, it got popular. It was, it's the best music in the world. It is. You know? So, and it's like tattoos, it's, it's kind of the same thing, you know what I mean? So. You're also a tattoo artist, right? Well, I, I can do one or two things, but I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a tattoo artist. Okay, uh, but when did you start making tattoos? <sighs> Well, I used to be a shop boy at a tattoo shop in San Francisco called 222 Tattoo. And I used to mop the floors. And, and this is right after we, we, Out Come the Wolves, we had done a year and a half of touring all around the world. And when I got home, I was so bored because I was used to being out every day. And my, and my good friend, this tattooer named Scott Sylvia, called me up just shooting the shit one day. And he's like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just chilling out. And he goes, well, Our shop girl just quit today. Why don't you come down and be the shop boy for a little bit? I was like, all right, it's cool, you know. And he said, well, you know, everybody, will, you'll get free tattoos. And I was like, fine, whatever. And so I went down there, and we were, it was a slow day at the shop, and, and, um, and uh, I can't remember who said it. It might have been Jeff Rasher or somebody that was working there. And they said, uh, man, you should tattoo me. And I was like, all right. So they thought it was kind of funny, like, ha, 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 the musician guy is going to tattoo us, the tattooers. <clears throat> so I just sat down and I did it, and they kind of showed me what to do, and I made a mess on somebody's leg. But, you know, they don't care. When you're so tattooed, it doesn't really fucking matter, right? 
And so then it started getting around, and then my buddy Eric Kogan wanted one, and then Tokyo Hero, and just it just like any time like I'd meet some tattooers that we were friends, they they wouldn't they would say, well we're not going to charge you for the tattoo, but we want one of yours, and that's kind of how it all started. And I've done like 500 now. That's just you know whatever. Yeah. Um, is it correct that you're involved into New York hardcore tattoos? Yes, that's right. So um, me and Vinny Stigma and Jimmy G. Uh, Mikey V and Tragedy from Upstate, um, you know, it's, it's all part of the black and blue family, the DMS family. So it's like, we, you know, the shop is, 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 is uh, basically they wanted kind of some new stuff to happen and whatever. And I think, <clears throat> you know, being involved, getting calls from uh, Vinny and, and Mikey and stuff like that saying, hey, you want to be involved in this? I was like, yeah, because New York Hardcore Tattoo in New York is like, that's the staple. You know, that's the, that was the first tattoo, I, a tattoo shop, I believe, legal tattoo shop in New York City. That's, really? Yes. Because the, uh, tattooing was outlawed in New York for, in, uh, for a long, long time. Um, so, and plus it's like, you know, it's like CBGBs or anything else. It's like a, a staple in the hardcore punk rock skinhead community. Like if you're into that kind of music, that's the tattoo shop you should be going to because those are the people you walk in and it's like a history lesson on New York hardcore. Yeah, another place. So, um, you know, I, you know, all those guys are my homie, you know, my brother. So it's like, of course, it was a no brainer. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And could you tell us something about uh, skunks tattoos in, I guess, London and Tokyo? Well, Tokyo, uh, that shop is now kind of we, after the when the earthquake and the tsunami and stuff like that. We were kind of coming out of our lease, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and just by coincidence, the lease was coming down, and I said, we should just stop it now, for right now, and wait for Japan to recover before we go there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just didn't seem right to me. You know, because ja if, if anybody's ever been to Japan, you realize how humble and how, how, how great the people are there. And I've made a lot of very, very close personal friends there. And they understood what I was talking about, and they got it. And uh, you know, it's just, it just—I figured we just, you know, yeah. it, it was really sad because I basically got home from from tattooing over there a week to the day the tsunami earthquake hit, and some of the I was in Sendai tattooing, and you know, some of the kids that were coming up were coming from the countryside there, so I don't even know if they're okay. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I <clears throat> out of my out of respect, I felt the best thing to do was maybe just wait for that shop to kind of re to find a new spot. And just you know, uh, skunks London. I have nothing to do with. That's just my friend Nick. Oh, okay. So, and he's part of the whole skunks crew and stuff like that. So, um, and he 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 called me and he said I'm opening a tattoo shop and and uh, what should I call it? And I said call it a fucking skunks tattoo. He said, really? And I said, yeah, because the Skunks, the original Skunks pub was an angel where the shop is. And that's where the, the Skunks things come from. Skins, oh, okay. skins and punks. And drunks? And drunks. And, um, you know, skinheads, punks, everybody, you know? And so the original Skunks pub was bit, literally a block or two right around the corner from his, where his shop is. So it made sense. If somebody want to get tattooed by you, Lars Fredericks, how yeah. does it work? Well, normally, like, I'll, 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 I'll just, like, be, you know, going to New York Hardcore or in Japan or I've gone to England to do it or whatever. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of like, I'll just decide, hey, let's go do it, you know. Or they'll call me and say, hey, do you want to do it again? And if I can do it, then I go do it. But I'm so busy now with the, the old firm Casuals and Rancid's 20-year anniversary this year. It's like, we just, you know, did two shows with Cox Bar two weeks, two weekends ago in San Francisco and it was like amazing and because uh, they had their 40th anniversary and we had our 20th anniversary and and me and Daryl Smith the guitar player from Cox Bar have been trying to get Rancid Cox Bar together since 2003 yeah. to play a show yeah just so to fly on the internet yeah so and there were great shows and and hopefully we'll be able to do it again you know more, at least a couple times more this year um, with them and because it's a real special thing for both of us you know so, because I think we're mutual admirers of each other's bands. So, and with the old from Casuals, we have the you know the, the the European tour and 
and we're constantly recording and, and, and doing shows and stuff like that. It's kind of, and I, now I'm a dad, I got two kids, you know, I have a very young son at home right now and a, uh, a four year old. And, and it's like, you know, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, for the last couple of years, I've been more of a family man because I have a wife and two children to take care of. And, and, uh, you know, so it's like I, I, it's a very important to me to be be there, be around my children. So I mean, it's like if I can take, you know, the tattooing thing is a little easier than like a tour, so to speak, because then I can take my 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 oldest with me. Like when I, we went to London, I took him with me, and he was three years old at the time, so he was you know running around and down the, around the tattoo shop, and he's it's funny because he wanted to get tattooed and just. <laughs> Like, you know. yeah, this, is, this is my next question. So, uh, what would you say if you, if one of your sons, want to get tattooed? You know, it's their choice. You know, I mean, I basically told, you know, because my son, you know, sometimes I, you know, I'll be hanging out and he'll look at a tattoo and he said, "Dad, I want to get that one," you know, or "I want to get that one." And I was like, "Okay, but I mean, you know, let's wait till you're 16." And he goes, "Okay." I mean, it's 18, but I said 16. And if you start getting stuff, and, but I'd, I'd, I'd watch him very closely so he doesn't get some like tribal shit or some shit. You know what I mean? so, so which one do you want from your tattoos? Which one is his favorite? Uh, he likes them all. I mean, he points to different ones. Like he, some of them like, you know, are kind of adult themed, you know, so, you know, girls with boobies and things like that. So, yeah. uh, you know, he's like, Dad, what, what's that one? And it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, when your four year old's asking you, you know, I got fuck off tattooed on me. He's like, what does that say? It's like, ah, nothing nice, you know, so. Is it right that you spent some time in jail back in the days? In where? In the jail. In a jail, yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's also kind of a stereotype question, but do you have any jail tattoos or something like that from that time? Um, I have some, some, some stuff. Um, not from actually inside the jail, though. I would never do that. <laughs> That's... Because they they mix they mix they you know you cut up checker pieces, you know checkers yeah. the game checkers, yeah. and cigarette ash and urine. Really? And that's how you make the ink. Well, that's not so good. Nah. <laughs> so, but no, I mean I you know you but you know, also the the term prison tattoo is also like something when you get from somebody outside of a tattoo shop too you know so, but no yeah. I never got anything in there. And is there a special style you prefer, like old school, new school, Japanese, for example, like, whatever? For instance, like, I love, I love the Japanese, I love the black and white, and I love the traditional style. And like a guy that does it amazingly, and one guy I'm, I want to get tattooed by is Han from a, a band called Evil Conduct. Yeah. He's an amazing traditional tattooer. He's uh, um, from Holland. If you go and see his stuff... There's a guy in Australia that plays in a band called The Corpse. I'd love to get tattooed by. I think is, and his name is Alex. Um, I like getting tattooed by, by, by people that are like my friends. Like I, Jimmy Gestapo tattooed Murphy's Law on me. And I tattooed a rancid on him, you know. So it's like these are the types of tattoos. Like, like I just tattooed my son, my second son's name. Like I tattooed my... my Myself, like I, I was just at Skunk's tattoo a couple nights ago because I went to, anyways, and I and I tattooed this in Japan, yeah, on my hand because I was bored, and then the other night I just tattooed that. So that's the kind of stuff I do. It's just lines, you know. I don't and stick figures. Can you show the camera if you like to? And there's also a GBH tattoo, yeah, I see. Yeah. Tattoo, yeah. So. Like I'd have, you know, I mean, that, those are the types of the fun tattoos. Like I had Chris from Crashed Out, the singer, he's tattooed me. You know, it's like these are the types of tattoos I like to get now. Because it's like my friends, guys in bands that I really like that just happen to be tattooers. Um, you know, just friends. And that, that's kind of to me more, actually more important than like, and plus I'm so covered anyways that like it doesn't really matter. Uh, what was your latest tattoo and what comes next? Well, the latest tattoo is my son Soren's name, and that was done two nights ago. Uh, next, I got, I got, see, I got the, the, the Japanese right here. It says Wolfgang, right, which is my son's, first son's name. And now I have two Wolfgang tattoos, so I need to get two Soren tattoos. The Cern, excuse me, that's, that's the correct pronunciation. Zuren. Well, Cern is the Danish pronunciation. Oh, okay. So, um, but he does have a German middle name, Adler. What was it? Adler? 
Adler? Yeah. Like eagle? eagle? Like eagle? Yeah, and, I, and my first son's Wolfgang. So that's a German name. It is. But, yeah. But my wife is part German, so okay. hence that. And plus, Wolfgang Fredrickson sounds pretty fucking tight anyway. But um, yeah. And he's a good kid. He's a Wolfgang. Like any other name would be, like you couldn't just call him Jim. You know, Jim Fredrickson just it wouldn't sound right. But uh, I probably have to get another Soren tattoo. I don't think there would be a, a kanji for the Soren though, because that actually is like old school. It's like in the, the kanji is like 3,000 years old. I had a friend of mine uh, when we were in Japan, he researched it. And basically, this one right here actually means Viking, but also means gang as well in Japanese. In Japanese. So, like, you legit, legitimately, you can walk to some, somebody who speaks Japanese and go, what does that say? And they'll say, wolf gang. So, okay. So, thank God it didn't say fried rice. Okay. You know it. what I mean? Chow mein. <laughs> Can't handle the shit, get out of the pit.